today instead of doing what we've been doing, testing the same load through two different guns, we're going to be testing two different calibers out of very similar guns. As this is nothing innovative, it's something I saw in the Military Arms Channel he did a year or two or more ago. Basically a 357 Magnum snub nose versus a micro 9mm. I was kind of surprised at his results, how much the 357 lost in such a short barrel. So, I'm going to try it myself and see how it does. Nothing. I doubt his results, it's just first hand knowledge is better than any other knowledge. So here we have a Taurus 605, basically a J-frame size, uh, 5 shot, 357 Magnum with 2 inch barrel, and a standard Glock 43, the smallest 9mm Glock makes. The ammo, instead of trying to keep it the exact same bullet weight as he did, I tried to come up with three options of if I was carrying this gun, what would I or what would a person likely to be carrying in it? And similar, if a person was carrying that gun, what would they be likely to carry in it? That may or may not be the same bullet weight. Plus, limited by what I have on hand. <coughs> the first load in the revolver is a 38 plus P. It's not a full magnum, but there's some folks that won't carry full magnums. Uh, and I kind of don't blame them. It's, I mean, for... Moderate use, you want the power, but they're just no fun to touch off. This is 125 grain, it is a plus P, uh, 38 special. Federal, 125 grain, full 357 Magnum jacketed hollow point, and 158 grain jacketed soft point. In the 9mm, very similar as far as progression. You've got to lighter load than two heavier loads. The first one is Federal HST. It's not a plus P. Standard 124 grain. Next one is hotter. It's a Corbon 100 grain plus P. The Urban Response. And the last one is a if you can read that box. It's a Hornady Critical Duty 135 grain plus P. Also, I wanted at the same time to see what the differences would be not only in this gun versus this gun but this gun versus a very similar gun but in nine millimeter basically a snub nose 357 comparing with a snub nose nine millimeter what would be the power differences so let's go ahead and get on it hopefully the chronograph will cooperate today And like usual, I will be putting the results in the chronograph as I get them. So you'll see in the same time I do. And at the end we'll compare the revolver versus the Glock. And then the 357 revolver versus the 9mm revolver at the same time. First load is the little J-frame revolver with the 125 grain plus P load. Okay, again... The plus P38s out of the two inch barrel. 750, that's more what I was expecting. And 785. Now the next load from the little J frame revolver. The Federal 125 grain jacket at hollow point. This is almost a legendary load in the handgun world. For a lot of years it held the highest ranking for one shot stops. As much weight as you want to put into those. So 125 grain Federal 357 full magnum out of the two inch J frame size gun. Good God. 1237. That's a lot of abuse for 1,237 feet, 125 grains, 
and 1225. Yeah. He might carry those for defense, but he won't be shooting a ton of them, I promise, out of this size gun. Last one up's going to be even less fun to shoot. Federal Full House 158 grain 357 Magnum. I have a two inch J frame size gun. Eleven oh nine and eleven eleven. Yeah, that's no fun, y'all. Okay, here we are testing the. Glock 43 with the HST standard pressure 124 grain. It's a different day. I got hung up and tied up with other things, but we'll continue on that same test. Okay, next up is the Plus P Core Bond 100 grain. Okay, this is the Core Bond Urban Defense or Urban Response, whatever they call it. 100 grain Plus P. Thirteen fifty-two. That's pretty snappy out of the little forty-three. 1363. Next up, the Hornady 135 plus P uh, critical duty. Same Glock 43 with the 135 Hornady. Does that get you the head stamp in there? Yeah, you can see it says plus P on there. Okay, that's the 135 Critical Duty Plus P from the Glock 43. 'll okay, we'll get those numbers put into the laptop and uh, get the comparison side by side of a micro 357 versus a micro nine millimeter with I think fairly representative carry loads. I'll do the snub nose nine millimeter versus snub nose 357 in a separate video just this one's getting pretty long and that's probably going to stir up a whole different hornet's nest so we'll keep them separate here well here's the numbers and uh guys just remember i'm just the messenger here okay don't be coming to me with the torches and pitchforks you saw the chronograph same as i did the revolver with the 38 plus p we got 750 and 785 with 125 grain bullet averaging 767 and a half 163 and a half foot pounds of energy. That's surprising to a lot of folks when it comes to 38 special, especially a plus P 38 special. Uh, folks just wouldn't believe you if you're just standing at the gun store counter and told them that, but it is what it is. You saw the chronograph again, just as I did. The Magnums obviously really stepped it up. We went from 160 foot pounds to 420 and 430, 432. So huge, huge increase and huge increase in punishment. You might carry those as defense against a mugger, but I'd, I'd have reservations about how much I'd believe somebody if they told me they were going to practice enough with those loads out of that size gun to get truly proficient at medium range shooting. If you want to be able to do, you know, headshots at 
20, 30 yards, if for some reason that were to come up, that takes practice. And that takes a lot more practice than I would be willing to put in with that gun, with that load, I think. Uh, I just, it is just very punishing uh, touching those off. Call me a wuss, but I used to really enjoy shooting my 454s. I'm not really recoil averse, but that's just no fun. Now, compared to the 9mm, if you look, the 9mm, the lowest was higher than the 38 plus P, and the highest was lower than the Magnum, just barely. We got 409 versus 420, 430, so very, very similar, but the 357 Magnum was more powerful. Uh, not hugely more powerful, not as much as most folks would expect. So that's what that is. This tape here, that's for something I'm covering up. I don't want to show it yet because it would be kind of a distraction, I think, at this point. I'll get to it in just a second. But the main thing here is just showing there is not a huge, huge difference functionally between the micro 9mm and the snub 357. There's some. You do get some benefit. What, 5%, 3%? but at a huge, huge increase in punishment, a less concealable gun, lower capacity, and all. So, And I'm not at all bashing the 38 and 357. Uh, 38 and 357 uh, are the calibers, one of the calibers I load most. That, 9mm and 45 Colt. Those are the four calibers I mostly hand load. Love them all, but truth is what it is. There's a lot of overlap between what a Micro 9 puts out and a Micro Revolver puts out uh, in those calibers. What this guy here is, that 163 foot-pounds of energy, when I saw that it reminded me of something I shot quite a while ago. My uh, pocket pistol is a little Ruger LCP. A little 380, tiny little thing. I mean, smaller, literally smaller than a Beretta 22 pocket pistol. And I got to looking at that number, and boy, folks are gonna roast me here when they see this. But again, truth is what it is. Those numbers right there, that little LCP, runs anywhere from 157 to 165 foot pounds of energy. So you've got a 35 caliber bullet with roughly the same energy, whether it's out of a Micro 380 or a Plus P38 snub nose. That's inarguable. I prefer the 38 just because I shoot them regu uh, recreationally, but again, I can't in good conscience deny the reality of what the chronograph is telling me. So I'm just gonna leave that out there and the, the decision is for each person to make up for themselves. Uh, I am a massive revolver fan. I love shooting revolvers. I would have no qualms about carrying this gun for defense with any of those loads. E even that little guy right there, as little power as that is with the Plus P38, I would still not be terrified if that's all I had on me. So, Again, just look at the numbers and decide for yourself if you want to carry a five-shot gun that's bigger, heavier, slower to reload, holds fewer rounds, and is only slightly more powerful. If you are, more power to you. God bless you. I'm a revolver guy myself in a lot of situations, but just putting it out there that the difference is not as extreme as folks tend to assume it is. Appreciate it.